What's up guys, welcome to the tutorial number 13 of the series special effects for games and today we are going to see how to create muzzle fires in After Effects and import them to Unity. In the previous tutorial we saw how to create muzzle fires and muzzle flash in Photoshop, you can check it out in the link in the description and you can find more tutorials on special effects if you go to my channel. You can also support me in my Patreon and have access to plenty more effects that may help you in your game. So let's see how we can do this. And as you can see I already have made this one in After Effects and it's really easy to do. So let's create a new composition like this. You can rename it to Muzzle Flash or something similar. The white can be 750 and for the head 500 should be enough. And you can also set the frame rate to 25 and the duration to 5 seconds. And the first thing we want to do is select the pen tool that you can find right here. For those who are familiar with Photoshop, the pen tool works in the same way, which means that if you click and drag, you can create this Bezier curve. And the idea is that we start with something very simple and small. It doesn't need to have a lot of points because we will add in a few minutes when we will animate the path. And we can actually crop this down to one second because this is going to be a muzzle flash and it's going to be really fast. And you can do it by dragging this like I'm doing. And now what we actually need to do is to come here to this arrow, press it and go to contents and in shape we have path. And we can click in this watch which will add a frame. As you can see, it will add a keyframe on the path. And we want to add a keyframe in the beginning and we want to add another one between the 5th and the 8th frame. Something like this. And this is where we will create our final shape of the muzzle fire. And by this I mean that now we need to double click on our shape frames and we can move these points. Now you can select again the pen tool and we can add more points to our shape like this. And this will allow us to manipulate the shape in a way that will look like a flame or something that you really want or something coming from a fantasy universe or maybe a sci-fi universe. I don't know, something that you have in mind. It's in this process, it's in this moment that you can shape that idea. And it doesn't need to be perfect because we will add some modifiers that will generate more details to our shape. Because as you can see, this is really simple compared to what we had in the beginning. Now I go back to frame 0 because I added more points and I want to create some more variety to the beginning. Now if you press play with spacebar, you can see that this grows really quickly and that's what we really want. Now let's make sure that this goes back to being small by going to the frame 20 and pushing all these points to create a very small shape like this one as you can see. Now let's make sure that we fade out the end and we can do this by going to the transform and in opacity let's click on the watch so we can add a keyframe and after 5 frames let's set the opacity to 0, something more or less like this. Ok that looks interesting, I'm just going to make the final shape a little bit smaller like this. Now, as you can see in this left panel, we have the project and the FX control. We want to go to the FX control panel, like this. And in this right panel, we have a search bar that we can search for effects and presets. So let's, let's type in turbulent displays and we can drag and drop to this left panel. And as you can see, this immediately takes effect and starts distorting our shape. And the amount basically controls the amount of this place. I'm gonna set a value of 75. And the size actually controls the size of the pattern. So a bigger size, it's a bigger pattern that will have a small influence. But a smaller size, it's a smaller pattern that will create more influence as you can see. And a value between 5 between 30 should be enough. You should actually play with these values and see what you like. We also have the complexity amount, which as you can see will create much more details to our muzzle effect. And as you may notice, if you scroll forward and backward, you will see that the 
turbulent displays is not moving, it's kinda still. And what we want to do is to press with ALT on top of the clock near the evolution, like this. And we can insert something like time multiplied by 320. And now if you scroll back and forward, you will notice that the turbulence displays is actually animated now. And now let's go ahead and search for a glow, which by default gives this nice red around our shape. And we can increase a little bit the glow radius and the glow intensity. That's really up to your taste. After you have done that, we are actually going to use the Still Eyes modifier, which is called Brush Strokes. And you will notice that it will create more details to our effect. And I'm going to increase the brush size and the stroke length to something like this. And this last parameter called Blend with Original, it's really great because it will allow you to blend between these brush strokes and the turbulent displays. I'm gonna set a value of 20 so we can see a little bit of the original shape. Yeah, that's looking great. Now let's search again for another effect, and this time is the, it's the roughen edges. And if we change the edge type to spiky, what we will see is that it gives the sensation that it has some flames around our muzzle fire. And I really think that these details is a plus to our effect. You can increase the border, I'm gonna set a value of 12, around 12. And the scale is a very important parameter that will actually allow us to control the amount of details we will have in our muzzle fire. I'm going to also increase the complexity to 3, and that's it for our rough and edges modifier. Now let's go ahead and add a second glow, which I believe it will give a nice detail to our muzzle effect. And you can increase or decrease the glow intensity, but as you may notice this is really saturated. And the way we can control the color of our muzzle flash is to go ahead and search for U. You can drag and drop the U saturation modifier and in the master saturation you can decrease a little bit the saturation if you want, if you believe it has too much saturation. You can also change the color if you want, that's up to you. And that's it for our muzzle flash. As you can see it's really quick to create some nice effects in After Effects. Now let's go ahead and export this to Unity and let's go to File and in Export we can select Add to Render Queue. And let's press in the Output Model in the Lossless and what we want is to select a PNG sequence for the format. And we also need to change the channels so it includes the RGB plus Alpha. Because as you can see if we press in this button our composition already has transparency. And you can switch between a black background and the, and the checker background with this button, by the way. Now, since this is going to export a PNG sequence, we need to select an output. And After Effects will add for us these hashtags that will enumerate all of the frames. Now, after you have selected a folder, you can go ahead and press Renderer. And now, we need a small software that you can find in Google to create a sprite sheet. If you search for Gluit, like this, it's probably the first link, if you don't find it, let me know. You can download Zip. And after you have unzipped, you can press this icon of the application, of the Gluit application. And the first step is to add our frames. So let's go to our frames, select all of the frames with Ctrl A and press Open. The next step is to select the number of columns we want in our sprite sheet. I'm gonna set the number of columns to 4 and press in Gluit. This will generate a sprite sheet and I'm gonna save this as muzzle cannon 2 underscore sprite sheet. Okay, that's fine, that's great. And if you want, you can decrease the size of this sprite sheet by going to Photoshop or to your image editing software and decrease it to half of the size. Now I'm gonna import both of the sprite sheet, the original sprite sheet and the sprite sheet with half of the size to Unity to a folder that I already have created. Now let's change the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. And down here in default we want to turn on Use Crunch Compression. And we want to set the compressor quality to 100. It will make sure that Unity loads faster the sprite sheets. And will also make them smaller. Which is really great. And now press Apply. 
and you may have to wait a few minutes. Let's go ahead and create a new particle system that we can rename it to particle system muzzle flash 02. And now I'm going to create a material. I'm going to rename it to muzzle cannon 02, something like this. And for the shader, I'm going to select alpha blended in this case. Now let's go ahead and drop the sprite sheet to our texture slot of the material and we can drop the material to the particle system. Let's set the start speed to 0 and the max particles to 1. And turn off shape, since this is going to be in the center and will not move upwards or sideways. Let's also turn on 3D start size and the values that worked for me were between 10 and 7 in the X axis, 7 and 5 in the Y axis and 0 in the Z. And uh, this will also create some randomness in the original size that you have created in After Effects. And as you may have noticed, this at the beginning appears as a sprite sheet. And what we need to do is to count how many images we have horizontally, which will represent the X, and how many we have vertically, which will represent the Y axis. Then if we go back to the text of sprite sheet, we can insert 4 in X and 6 in Y, at least in my case. Now, as you may notice, nothing happens, it's not animated, because the frame over time is basically set to zero. And we need to click in this square and select this curve, which will set the frame over time in an even way. And if you press simulate, now you can see it's really, really slow. And this happens because we need to set the start life to be random between two constants and values between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6, maybe more, it depends how many frames you have, you know, and uh, we'll do the work. We also want to set the duration to 1 and to turn off looping in this case. And as you can see, it's really cool. I really like this effect. Let's set the rate over time to zero. Let's add a new burst with the plus sign. And we want a minimum of one and a maximum of 30. The maximum is 30 because in the max particles, I have set one. So only one particle will be emitted. And that's basically it for our muzzle flash. In this case, I'm going to create some particles because this is going to be applied into a cannon and I really like to see some, some sparks coming out of the cannon. And I'm going to create a new particle system as a child, rename it to particles, set the duration to be the same as the muzzle, which is 1, rotate in the Y axis 90 degrees, and as you can see, the particles are not being emitted in the beginning of the muzzle flash. And this happens because we need to go to the muzzle particle system and down here in render we can control the pivot but first we want to set the billboard alignment to local and then we can set the pivot to around 0 0.3 0 0.4 now let's go back to our particles and we want to turn off looping uh, i'm going to increase the angle and the radius i'm going to decrease it just a little bit now I'm going to set the emission rate over time to zero and I'm going to use a burst. A minimum of 30 and a maximum of 150 in this case. And the max particles will also be 150, maybe less. And as you can see, these, these particles are leaving too much time. So I'm going to decrease the start lifetime to be random between 0.3 and 0.8, something more or less like this. I also want to create some randomness in the start speed, so they don't have the same speed. And I'm going to set something between 4 and 15, maybe I'm going to increase the minimum. The start size, it's also going to be random between 0.01 and 0.2, maybe more. Now, the start color, it's going to be random between two colors, between a yellow, yellow-orange, and... Um, darker orange, almost red. I'm going to decrease a little bit the opacity of both colors. Yeah, just like this. And now we can turn on color over lifetime, so we can create a nice fade in and a nice fade out for each particle. And it's really easy to use. The keys on top control the opacity. You can add one with mouse one. And the keys on bottom controls the color. And I want something more or less like this. Yeah, it's looking really great. I really like the effect. This will also be cool for a shotgun. 
So at the end, what we really want to use is to go to the render and we want to change the render mode to stretch at billboard. And this will allow us to increase the speed scale, which will stretch the particles, as you can see. Maybe 0 0.2 is too much, but a value of 0 0.05 should be enough, at least in my case. And now I believe it gives this nice effect. And now if you want, you can add some smoke at the end. I also believe it will be a really nice detail to our muzzle, but I have already shown you how to do that in a lot of tutorials, so so that's pretty much it for our muzzle effect. Now you can play with these values and um, see what you like. This is a workflow that I like to use to create some nice effects. After effects, it's really powerful and uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you want to have access to all of these effects and much more, you can support me on my Patreon page. I will appreciate a lot. I have plenty of effects there. Go check it out. I'll have the link in the description. And uh, I hope to see you in the next tutorials. Subscribe for weekly game development. And thank you for watching.